All right, what is up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to the channel, and welcome back to another Mark 6 TDI install video. Today, we are going to be pulling off our super loud, very obnoxious, full three inch straight pipe setup that I have on the TDI right now. And we're going to be installing a factory, factory, slightly modified, resonator deleted, Mark 6 GTI stock exhaust with the valence and everything so that it looks nice and factory. So obviously, we're gonna just jump right into this install. Relatively straightforward. I'll be covering this as if you have a stock system or a uh, raw tech downpipe or whatever. And we'll be doing all of the adapting and everything for installing a GTI exhaust on your TDI or you could use this for if you have a 2.5 or whatever and you want a GTI exhaust rear end with the rear valence or diffuser or whatever you want to call it. But obviously, first step, you need to get your car in the air. So uh, as Mighty Car Mod says, first step, jack up your car. So we've got the jack set up on our rear driver's side. Um, because obviously we have only the single exit right now. I'm going to put a jack stand on this side and then lift the other side so we just basically have the whole rear of the car in the air. Block your front wheels as well because you will not have the beautiful help of your e-brake. So you're gonna need to make sure that regardless of if you are manual or DSG, that little bit of gearbox play doesn't end your life. Get it in the air nice and secure and let's start taking the exhaust off. Okay, so one thing I want to cover with doing the install for this, for the parts that you're going to need, that's if you need any parts at all. So when you have a stock Golf, a 2.5, a 2 liter, a 1.8, or a 2 liter TDI that is not a GTI, for installing the exhaust on the driver's side, you have a permanently mounted exhaust hanger that you will need a either a new exhaust hanger for, or you're going to reuse the one that comes off of your stock exhaust. There is a second exhaust hanger that is also mounted to the frame that's just inside the wheel well up where the resonator is on the GTI exhaust. You can, re like I said, you can reuse your stock hanger or you can go and buy a new one. And then you have the down pipe, the mid pipe, and then you have the where the rear cat back or the muffler and the resonator meet the mid pipe. You have two hangers there. Once again, reuse the hangers or you're gonna need two. So if you're going all new hardware, you're gonna need four total hangers along with the stock GTI passenger side hanger. So if you're buying an exhaust off of somebody that is parting out a vehicle or you're just buying a stock exhaust, see if you can get the passenger side hanger that mounts up on the passenger side tailpipe for the GTI because most of the other stock kits or the stock setups will have a different hanger. You can try using the stock hanger if you want. It might be uh, a little bit of messing around and it might position the muffler differently, but do that at your own discretion. If you need bolts for the hanger in the rear or for the heat shield for the muffler itself, these are, I believe, M8 by 1.25 or 1.0 thread pitch, and this is a 20 millimeter long bolt, or two centimeters or whatever, you Americans, one inch bolt. And that can be used to bolt the hanger in, or the hangers in. And then that's pretty much all the hardware you need, and then obviously whatever mid pipe you have or down pipe to be able to bolt the muffler to the mid pipe, you're gonna need an exhaust clamp or however you're gonna do that setup. And then you can go ahead and start pulling everything apart once you have all your parts and throw the muffler in, so. Now that we've got our car nice and in the air, we have, or you should have a clamp right here or some form of an exhaust connection depending on how your setup is. As I said, mine is fairly custom, so I have a big old resonator right there to where the cat back begins is right here. So you have this cross member and you'll have a clamp here, two hangers up in this area, if it'll refocus on the pipe up in here. Another hanger up around where the original resonator was on my car, which if you can see right here, there's this big empty space. So I have another hanger, should be up over there. And then you're gonna have one in the back. So we'll start by unbolting that bit right there with the old Ugga Dugga machine. Fucking easy. There we go. 
So the whole exhaust came out. So now that we have our aftermarket exhaust back out, or if that, in your case, you have your stock Golf exhaust removed, we can now go ahead and fire in the GTI valence that we have. So we're obviously going to need to take the stock one out. I'm actually probably gonna quickly clean this before I, ah, no, you know what, it's fine. So we're gonna need to pull the stock Golf valence out. As you can see on the GTI one, there are all these little tabs that go along the bottom of it, along with some screws on the ends and on the inside. So you're gonna need to take all of those out and I will show you how to do it once I crawl underneath the car here. We'll go ahead and pull the stock one off. For those bolts on the valence that you need to pull off, they're just Torx bits, there's four of them. There's one there, one here, one there, and then one on the other side as well. So we're just gonna quickly rip those out. Okay, so I'm gonna try and get these out. So I'm just gonna test a couple different ways to try and pull these out, but I think you should just be able to use your hands. Like I got the bottom one, yeah, there we go. Oh shit, it just wants to pull out, okay. So I just I just unclipped the bottom one with my hand and then you just pretty much pull the valence the rest of the way out by hand, I guess. Hopefully it's that easy for you guys. I, didn't, I don't have to do anything different. Boom, so that's out. So if you look, the GTI valence is a little bit different than the stock one. Um, as you can tell, obviously it bolts in to the bumper a little bit more on the bottom. So that's why we had to pull those extra bolts out. So as you see, there's only two that hold the stock valence in, and then you just have the new section that goes into the bumper on the corners. And then this should just slap right back in as uh, the stock one came out. So let's see how easy that is. And I guess it really was just that simple. So all the tabs are clicked in. And as you can see, the GTI one does stick out a little bit farther than the stock one. So we've got all that in. So now we're just gonna go ahead and throw those bolts in and then the valence should be installed and then it'll be time to throw the exhaust in. So I'm just gonna throw those bolts in because I hope you guys don't need a tutorial on how to screw some screws or some bolts back in. So we'll do that and then we'll throw the exhaust in. We've got new whoo, hangers and stuff. We're gonna throw the hangers on the, uh, the exhaust itself before we slap it up into the car here. Obviously, since this is a TDI, we're gonna to need to see how it sounds with the GTI exhaust. Stinky. <laughs> There you go. GTI exhaust is fully installed on the TDI. Um, one thing that you might notice right off the bat is that the passenger side is a little bit lower than the driver side. Now, the only reason for that is because the hangers that I used on the driver side for the rear muffler section actually weren't OEM or like part numbered exhaust hangers. I just actually went and bought those from Canadian Tire because they were about the right measurement for the stock um, like length. I'll put the part number for the right hangers for the driver's side on there just so that you guys have that um, as well as there are actual like proper hangers for this. And then that way you guys kind of hopefully will get the, uh, the right depth and everything for 
the exhaust, but the diffuser definitely does make the car look a whole lot better and a lot more like it is a performance car rather than just a diesel. So it does definitely add to the appearance of the car. But there you go. I hope you guys enjoyed this install. A little bit of an easier uh, kind of upgrade just for some of you guys that if you have a regular 2.5 Golf or something and you want to make it look different, you can just go ahead and do that. But anyways, guys, thank you once again for checking out the video. Um, I know I say this pretty much every video now, but if you're new here, don't forget to subscribe. Share this video with your friends that have Mark 6s and you want them to make their car look a little bit better. Um, as you can tell, it is very, very sunny out today. So we're finally going to go out and shoot the reveal video for the brand new car that is literally like not even a foot behind you guys. So stay tuned for that video. And then also don't forget to check out uh, the Instagrams, we have my YouTube Instagram now, and then also the Reckless account. I'm about to receive all of the stickers for Reckless, so the website is gonna be up soon, and if you guys wanna grab yourself a banner sticker or some of the other decals going to be releasing in the near future, that would be awesome as it directly supports the channel and we can build more cool stuff and faster Volkswagens as time goes on, and I would really appreciate it. But anyways, guys, Thank you so much for checking out the video. Peace out. I will see you in the next one.